Hello, fellow Java developers. Welcome back to our starter course on Apache Camel. In this video, we will take a look at how to use Camel with Spring Boot framework. We will look into how Camel context is managed automatically and looks up bins in Spring's application context. What kind of beans does Camel bring along that can be injected in our Spring beans? How can we create routes and use Spring properties? How can we access Camel endpoints from within our regular Java code? And how unit testing Camel routes with Spring Boot looks like? Let's begin! For this video, I've already created a project with routes, beans, test, and everything you will need to look at how Camel works with Spring Boot. Let's start from POM XML. Camel Spring Boot dependencies have org.apache.camel.springboot group ID. And in this group, there is a lot of starters. The core one is Camel Spring Boot Starter. It auto configures Camel context, allows routes auto discovery, brings Camel related bins like producer template, and does all kinds of other core functionalities. Camel components with Spring Boot are added with this Camel Component Starter dependencies. For example, here I have Camel GMS Starter. You can look up starter for each component in its documentation. It is located at the bottom of the documentation page in this Spring Boot auto configuration section. Here we can see starter dependency and a list of configuration properties that can be used to auto configure this component. Back to our POMXML, here we can see that I have starter Artemis. This is for Artemis Connection Factory auto configuration. We will look at it in a minute. And as testing dependencies, I have, of course, Spring Boot Starter Test and Camel Test Spring GUnit 5. This is the essentials that you need to unit test your Camel routes. Now onto the main theme, Camel Context Auto Configuration. As you can see, here in this application, camel context is not managed anywhere. This is because it is auto configured, automatically started and run. The only thing that we need to specify is this camel spring boot main run controller equals true property. This is needed because otherwise we don't have any extra threads running and our application just exits from main method and ends without giving camel context any time to actually work and this property just makes it work indefinitely by creating a separate thread what can also be done instead of specifying this property is we can add spring boot starter web to our pom this will spin up a web server that will be run in separate thread and achieve the same result of making our camel context work indefinitely. Here we're not using any web dependencies, so we're going with this property. Apart from managing camel context automatically, camel spring boot dependency brings an ability for camel context to look up bins in Spring's application context. We'll see how it works in a minute. And the last thing to say about camel context is that in Spring applications, camel context is a bin and can be injected as any other Spring bin. For example, with auto-wired annotation, although it's not recommended for this kind of injection, it's better to use final fields and constructor injection. But anyway, if we need to configure our camel context, we can just inject it in our configuration class or whatever and do with it whatever we need. Now on to routes configuration. As you can see, our route class does not differ from route classes in our regular 
camel applications that we've done before. The only difference is this component annotation. And this is all because camel spring boot auto detects any class that extends route builder and of course is a spring bin and runs the route specified. What we can also make use of in a route itself is first of all springs properties. You see here I have example.q.input.name property used as a queue name and in my application properties I have this exact property setup. And I don't need to configure anything in camel context or camel's properties component. This is all configured for me by camel spring boot starter. Same with an output, but now I think you got the idea. And another thing we can do in camel routes with spring boot is use bin DSL element to process our exchanges by spring beans. Here we have example message transformer bin reference and if you look into our example message transformer it's just a bin with this name and it has also two other bins auto wired and as its single method it has this transform that accepts exchange if you've seen our message transformation video you should be familiar with that already but basically camel detects that our bin has only one method and this method accepts exchange so camel in this bin dsl element calls this method passing the exchange to it here we can do with our exchange whatever we want including using these bins that were injected to our initial bin so we can set up a complex logic here with a lot of dependencies that will be injected and managed by spring for us the other thing we can make use of in camel spring boot application is injecting producer or consumer templates as you might know from our apache camel testing video these templates are used to produce or consume from camel endpoints this means that for example we can inject this producer template bin in any of our bins that do our logic and from inside that bin we can send messages to camel routes that we have in our context. So basically we can communicate with camel routes from inside any Java code. This is usually used to communicate with direct routes. For example, here we have this direct example route. So we can copy this endpoint, go here, paste it. And now our do stuff method when called will send this hello world body to this direct example endpoint and our route will get it from this endpoint and processes it as specified in its definition. Now on to how components that are using connection factories are configured in camel spring boot. These components are usually GMS and any kind of database connecting components like GDBC, SQL, GPA components. What is usually happening is that these components require a connection factory to be able to send and receive messages. And as you might remember from our previous videos, when we set up our connection factory for our GMS component, we've added it to the context and then set up our component to use the factory itself. Here in this application and that's how it is usually done in simple applications. We have this Spring Boot Starter Artemis dependency that is not coming from Camel but is a usual Spring Boot dependency. What it does, it auto configures GMS connection factory for Artemis by using these properties. And what our camel GMS component does is it uses this autowired enabled property, which basically tells us that if the component needs something to work, for example, GMS connection factory, it will look it up in registry, meaning in Spring's application context in our case, automatically. And this option is true by default. 
So when this GMS component realizes it needs GMS connection factory, it goes to registry, which means to spring application context and looks up connection factory there. And we have our connection factory auto configured by this Spring Boot Starter Artemis dependency. Note though that if we've had two GMS connection factories auto configured, then this setup wouldn't have worked because this GMS component cannot automatically choose between several GMS connection factories. It needs exactly one GMS connection factory in the context. And in the case we have several, we need to either specify connection factory like that in an endpoint itself, or what people usually do is they create configuration package. In the package itself, they create camel configuration class. Here, of course, we need configuration annotation. And here with bin annotation, we can return GMS component. Let's call it something like Artemis that accepts GMS connection factory. Here we're creating a new component, setting connection factory and returning this component. Usually you can use qualifier here to specify which connection factory exactly do you want. This is the setup that is used in the case we have several connection factories. For example, this might happen when we connect several different MQ brokers, like several Artemis instances, or maybe we have one Artemis broker and the other, for example, WebSphere. Doesn't matter. This setup we can use to configure our connection factory. And then after we've configured that, we can use this Artemis GMS component in our routes by specifying it instead of the regular GMS component. And this way we don't need to specify connection factory at the end point like that. Now onto the testing. We can unit test our camel routes with regular Spring Boot test annotation. Here we can inject our context, make use of our regular Makita annotations to mock our spring beans. But what I want to show you here is these two annotations. Endpoint inject allows you to inject mock endpoints, which is very convenient. You don't need to get them from camel context. Here you just specify an annotation, mock endpoint name, and you have it. You can use it in your test. Same with producer template. Of course, it can be auto-wired, as we've seen in our service, but this produce annotation injects a producer template configured to write messages to this exact endpoint that we've specified. Here it is direct example, and by injecting in this way, we can then use this template to send our messages without specifying destination each time. As you can see here, I'm just specifying body and then header, and it looks a lot cleaner, especially if you have many calls to template methods like this. Here in our before each method, we're using advice with. There is nothing new here. You can look at how it's used and what it does in our previous video on Apache testing. This is exactly the same configuration that you've seen there. What is interesting about this test is that we have our message transformer mocked. As you remember, it is called in our route to transform our message. Here we mocked it and in our test we're verifying that its transform method which processes our exchange is called exactly once. So by using mocks, you can actually test your camel route logic without having any dependency bins interfering. And one more thing I forgot to mention is that we actually need to add camel spring boot test annotation. This is needed in case we have more complex test configuration because this 
Camel Spring Boot test annotation ensures that Camel context starts, runs, and stops as it is needed for testing classes. So, in general, just add this annotation to your Spring Boot Camel tests. So, this is how we work with Apache Camel in Spring Boot. We just create routes as our regular Spring Beans. We can reference other beans in our route to make transformations or processing or any other code execution. And when we want to test our route, we're using mocks to isolate it. We're injecting our camel context to make use of advice with, as usual, to replace inputs and outputs of our route with mocks. And we use endpoint inject annotation to get our mock endpoint and produce annotation to get our template. Otherwise, testing is the same as in regular camel applications. And that's it. Now we've seen everything we need to know to work with camel in Spring Boot. As you can see, there is no exactly new concepts. If you know camel well, it will be very easy for you to grasp camel with Spring Boot. Just add starter dependencies and you have all this wonderful automatic context management, routes auto discovery and all other nice things I've talked about in this video. And with that, here is the end of our video on working with Apache Camel in Spring Boot. Thanks for joining, be sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below, I will answer to all of those. See you in the next video. Until then, happy coding!